Meanwhile, Elon Musk's newest Twitter file showing how cozy the relationship was between the FBI and Twitter right before he took over. Journalist Matt Taibbi's thread showing that there were more than 150 emails, 150 emails between the FBI and the safety chief, Yul Roth, between January of 2020 and November of 2022. And while some of these exchanges were, quote, mundane, others are, quote, requests for information into Twitter users related to active investigations. Yes, I would call that cozy. And just how much attention the FBI paid to Twitter's election tampering, that was also revealed in the latest dump. Now, Taibbi tweeting that the FBI social media focused task force, which was created after the 2016 election, grew eventually to about 80 agents, 80 FBI agents. So the question now, how is the mainstream media reacting to all of this? Well, Network News virtually ignoring the sixth installment of the Twitter files since they dropped yesterday afternoon and instead reporting on the reporters that Elon Musk suspended for allegedly doxing him. So let's talk about all of this uh, Twitter craziness. I want to start with you, Lisa, because when you when you think about this relationship, I've never heard of anything like this. Um, the FBI did release a statement. If we could pop that up on the screen really quickly, and I'll just read off just the first line here. The FBI regularly engages with private sector entities. So that's their defense. Mm. They're saying they, they do this all the time, Lisa. Well, What's yeah, the they, point? They spy on Americans all the time. And it really raises the question, is the mission of the FBI to keep Americans safe, or is it to spy and surveil Americans, right? And it seems like it's the latter instead of the former. And you can go back. Ron Paul said in 1988 that that was the mission of the FBI, to spy on Americans and to spy on Americans who disagree uh, with, the, you know, the president in charge of uh, policy, right? And he pointed out to Woodrow Wilson during the First World War of using the FBI to spy on Americans, to arrest Americans who disagreed with him and his policy in regard to, to Europe. And you can go back to the 1917 Espionage Act, which was the first nationwide domestic surveillance system, including wiretapping. And, and it really looks like the intent of the FBI is to spy on us, and particularly when you look at what they miss, right? You had Nicholas Cruz, the Stoneman Douglas shooter who killed 17 people at Marjorie Stoneman uh, Douglas. Uh, he posted on YouTube that he was going to be a school shooter. The yeah. FBI was aware of this. You look at uh, Fort Hood as well. The FBI had the opportunity to intervene uh, with the Pulse nightclub shooting as well, which I, I think killed 49 people in Orlando, the uh, Boston bombers as well. But you've got 80 FBI agents dedicated towards censoring Americans, including jokes, which are very obvious that they're jokes, yet they miss the big ones. They miss the big things they're supposed to stop or they're yeah. instigating it like January 6th and uh, the uh, Gretchen Whitmer kidnapping plot. Yeah, good point. 80 is a lot. Um, Raymond, I want to um, have all of us listen to Dan Bongino, um, host of Unfiltered here and Fox and Friends Weekend. Um, he makes a really good point about what the FBI's role is. Let's listen to this. When you're acting on behalf of the Secret Service, the DEA or the FBI, it is assumed assume that obviously you are acting on behalf of the United States government, right? So if you're acting on behalf of the United States government, there are constraints on what you can do. Those constraints are limited by, you know, by, you know, the Constitution. And remember, the FBI to do this kind of stuff, guys, has a process. There's rules of evidence. There are criminal trials. You can't just willy-nilly go to private companies and go, take this down, take that. That's not the way this works. Mm. Okay, and don't forget, you can catch more of Dan Bongino on Unfiltered, his show airing tonight at 9 o'clock. Just a little plug for Dan the Man. Um, <laughs> Raymond, I want to come to you because, obviously, um, not only were there 80 FBI agents, obviously, op operating and looking into these Twitter so-called threats, but then mm -hmm. there's also now revelations that there were Justice Department employees that actually yes. went over to Twitter to work there, well, embedded it, into Twitter. And ex-FBI ex employees, yeah. including the general counsel of the FBI, who left the FBI and went to work at Twitter. So they not only embedded, they began to create platforms and processes within Twitter to collude and work with their former employees and friends at the FBI to slash and censor any information that was politically disadvantageous to their point of view and their side. That's what needs inquiry. Congress has to look into this. And I know the FBI and Twitter says, wait a minute, 
we just made suggestions to a private organization. Twitter could have done whatever they wanted. They didn't need to act on our suggestions. Well, when the FBI comes mm -hmm. and tells you, if they walked into our control room and said, look, Every time Arroyo and Jones speaks, hit, hit the mute button. I'd be scared for you. People might, people might worry. <laughs> and yeah, and, and it, it's intimidating. Yeah. It's intimidating yeah. when the FBI says it. And I think, given the partisan purposes of those involved, that all has to be unraveled and see did they in any way twist or distort information before an election? That is the real That's question. The question. And that was the last time we saw Raymond and Joey. <laughs> <laughs> And we're we gone. went to a break and they weren't here when we came back. <laughs> Joey, you gotta, I gotta, we got to touch on the doxing because that's really raised a lot of eyebrows, too. Uh, I want to ask you about Elon Musk. Um, he's getting so many different headlines. He's done a lot of good work in revealing, you know, obviously through these Twitter files, a lot of information we've been waiting for. Um, but what about the doxing? What about, you know, talking, uh, suspending the accounts yeah. of journalists that basically shared information that was already public and out there? You know, just real quick, back to what Raymond and Lisa are talking yeah. about with the FBI. Uh, you know, we always caveat and say, but there are FBI agents on the ground doing great work. And, and I believe that's true. But at the end of the day, my posture is neutral at best with law enforcement, uh, federal law enforcement. Because as someone who believes in, in civil rights and, and personal ability to govern myself in the day to day of my life, I see every day more places where the government's trying to take control of my life. And, and so I can't think of anything more benign to being an American. We had this whole citizenship conversation earlier than, than your personal liberty. Mm -hmm. And so that should matter. And, and Elon Musk has shown himself to care about that as a topic. But what has Twitter turned into today? It's turned into a big, a big drama that we're all watching. Yeah. He's, taken, he's taken it very personal. And I just hope that he can peel himself away because the end result of a lot of his efforts have been very good. Uh, but, you know, maybe his goal is just kind of to destroy Twitter from the inside out. Well, know. let me ask you guys really quickly before we go. What is the future of Twitter? Does Twitter stay or go? I well, think Twitter should stays. stay. It's, yeah. it's a free platform. But there are going to be political contests within it. And that's what we're seeing. Well, so, I mean, like, the dude sent people to space. Like, I think he's got Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, the dude. I think he's got this. Yeah. You think Twitter sticks around? Oh, Twitter's going to stick around. It's just like it's Facebook. It's got to get more around. users. Uh, you know, Facebook, the, the user base has changed a little bit. Yeah. People have moved to Instagram. There's always something on the horizon. I truly believe that. That's what's great about this country. Yeah. Okay. All right. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.